Welcome everyone to LT Gaming. My name is Tom and today I'm diving into the realms of Norse mythology and epic battles with the highly anticipated release of Sons of Valhalla. This one's developed by Pixel Chest in their debut game and it's published by the ever reliable Hooded Horse, hitting shelves on April 5th. In this review, I've been given early access to the game and I'm going to deep dive into Sons of Valhalla after spending around 10 to 12 hours immersed in its Viking Age world, and I would say I've reached a completion of somewhere between 80 to 90%, so I'm on the very last level. But before we delve into the gameplay intricacies, let's set the stage. Sons of Valhalla is a captivating blend of combat and base building set against the backdrop of the Viking Age. Players immersed in this 2D world will find them themselves tasked with constructing formidable fortresses, leading daring raids, and engaging in intense personal combat as you traverse through the untamed landscapes of England. What immediately struck me about this game was it invoked a strong resemblance to my beloved Kingdom series. As a fan of those titles, I couldn't wait to see how Sons of Valhalla stacked up. So without further ado, let's hoist ourselves and embark on this adventure together and see what this game has for us. In Sons of Valhalla, players are immersed in a captivating blend of side-scrolling combat and base-building strategy, all set within a visually striking pixel art rendition of the Viking Age. You assume the role of Thorold, a determined warrior on a quest for vengeance against the Jarl who abducted his beloved and fled to England. Players must assemble a formidable warband and establish a fortress from which to launch this search and conquest. You strengthen your stronghold by generating resources, while personally leading your warriors into combat, laying siege to enemy settlements and confronting enemies head on. Base building forms the cornerstone of this journey, so you develop your town, you manage your economy and balance that with your military might as well. As you accumulate power, you challenge your foe across the map and expand, taking over new trading posts and new settlements gathering more resources and rallying bigger armies to your calls. Once you reach the end of a given level, boss fights then occur, and these are a stark departure from the routine encounters, and they present players with a unique set of challenges that demand some strategic thinking, mastery of the techniques within the game, and perseverance to whittle away at these formidable health bars. Alright, so picture this. In Sons of Valhalla, you're thrown into this cool pixel art Viking Age world where you're Thorod Olufsen, this warrior dude who's completely obsessed with hunting down the Jarl who's wrecked his home, nabbed his loved one, and then hightailed it off to England. Classic revenge plot here. Now, the story, it's kind of your standard formula. You know, a hero on a mission and all that stuff. It's got its own charm, so it's not all too bad. Now onto the characters, you get this typical good guys and bad guys. Everyone fits into their own little box. Uh, if you think of the kind of medieval archetypes, you have the hero, the villain, the wise old mentor, and you get the idea. Nothing too groundbreaking here, but it does get the job done. All right, so we've done a gameplay overview, but let's get into the nitty gritty of how things actually play out in Sons of Valhalla. So basically the game splits into two parts. You have your base building and kind of defense side of things where you've got to hold your fort until you've got enough troops and resources to start expanding and snagging new settlements into your control. When it comes to the action, the big ticket items here are the boss fights. These bad boys are like big epic showdowns where you've got to figure out the enemy's moves, whittle down their health bar. It's pretty standard stuff, but it does keep things interesting and breaks up the gameplay. There is a stealth mini game thrown in at some point uh, for good measure. This personally wasn't my cup of tea and it felt a bit more like a chore than anything else. But the gameplay design, it's got, I would definitely say an addictive factor going for it. Especially with the base building side of things, this really appeals to my mindset. Building up my forces, beefing up your economy, and then when you're ready, go diving in, attacking your enemies, destroying them, Complete decimation, I love that stuff. But here's the thing, it does after a while start to feel a little formulaic. You know what's coming next and it is missing a little bit of that element of surprise and randomness. And this is when I have to tie it back to Kingdom where that game always felt like unique playthrough every time. Whereas with Sons of Valhalla, it does feel a little bit more standard cookie cutter template style. 
So yeah, Sons of Valhalla has its highs and lows from a gameplay perspective. Overall, it's a very fun ride. Just watch out for the stealth minigame. Alright, let's dive into the presentation elements on Sons of Valhalla. How does it look and sound? First up, the art style is pretty cool, I gotta say. It's got a fun, functional vibe that fits the game's whole aesthetic like a glove. Things like the weather effects are really something else. Picture this, you're charging forward in the middle of a thunderstorm, ready to storm the enemy fortress, and the thunder and lightning is just crackling in the background. It is atmospheric as hell. And bring us on to the sound side of things. The soundtrack is solid, if not a little unmemorable overall, whereas the sound effects, I think they're really on point. They add an extra layer of immersion. Like I said before, the thunder in the background as the lightning is arcing across the sky really adds immersion to the whole experience for me. So when it comes down to it, it is a very functional, complementary uh, aspect of the game, the presentation, without being outstanding per se. Alright, let's touch upon the replay value and customization available within Sons of Valhalla. When it comes to customization, you have the ability to pick up different rooms and customize your character. So essentially, you can have different builds. And it opens up a world of possibilities when you're going for different approaches. The only issue is, it's very random in how these rooms are dropped from enemies, so it can be very difficult to build a synergistic build. When it comes to replay value, you do have a couple of options. There is the campaign mode, which is your standard story type deal. And to be honest, you're probably unlikely to play this through twice for the story, but you might do it again to maybe try a different difficulty level or unlock an achievement, for example. And then there is the horde mode, which is very welcome. And it's your whole endless waves of enemies kind of mode. I would love to see a bit more variety here, maybe modifiers or different challenges that you could undertake but maybe this will uh, be released in the future. In terms of content, I think you're looking at around 15 to 20 hours of playtime, not including excessive runs on Horde mode, for example. Not too shabby at all, but could definitely still use a bit more meat on the bones. In terms of a conclusion, it's probably time to wrap things up for Sons of Valhalla. It is a solid game, no doubt about that. It's got its strengths, but it's also got its weaknesses too. It could have been great, I think. And a roguelike mode, which was fully embracing of this fact, uh, might have taken things to the next level. If you're into this kind of game, you've had a blast with King titles like Kingdom, then yeah, you're probably going to enjoy Sons of Valhalla, and I would put it down as a buy. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10 overall. I think there's potential here, and I really hope they add on to it in the future and make it into something special.